in the westernmost portion of the borough of Queens is the industrial neighborhood of Long Island City, a neighborhood that was its own independent city, facing the amazing views of the Manhattan skyline. Long Island City was formed in the 1870s after combining the surrounding neighborhoods on this side of Queens. It became the seat of Queens County before being integrated into the greater area of New York. Long Island City saw rapid industrial growth with the addition of the Long Island Railroad and countless ferries along the East River, eventually developing into the trendiest neighborhood in the borough of Queens. Hi, I'm Jose and I'm in Long Island City, the ever-changing area of Queens that has become the fastest growing urban neighborhood in America. On this tour, we'll explore the unique history of the neighborhood, from its farmland and industrial beginnings to its revitalization into a vibrant commercial and residential playground. Long Island City bridges a story of an independent town in the new New York City, with amazing landmarks throughout the waterfront and the most art galleries of any neighborhood in the city. It becomes America's best example of adding harmony to urban development. So let's go on tour and explore Long Island City. New York City, the largest urban area across all of America. It's a place divided by its famous five boroughs, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Staten Island, and the Bronx. And what separates these boroughs are the massive bodies of water that lead into the Atlantic Ocean, rivers and straits that have been the pillar of New York's industrial growth. The city has several waterfronts to enjoy the fantastic views of the giant skyscrapers. Walking along the pier by the East River treats me to the amazing skyline of Manhattan's lower and midtown districts, the heart of New York City. Long Island City is one of the best suburbs in Queens to connect with Manhattan. Only a subway stop away, it feels like an extension of New York's bustling center. Long Island City one of the largest neighborhoods on this side of Queens. Like many other neighborhoods in Queens and the rest of New York City, it was inhabited by Native American tribes before the European expansion. The Lenape Native Americans built communities along the East River when the area comprised of Long Island City and the surrounding neighborhoods like Steinway, Astoria, Sunnyside, and Hunter's Point. By the time the Dutch and English settled in this part of Queens, the area had become famous for its farmland. The glacial soil found by Flushing attracted new settlers to the area with history as early as the 1600s. Queens was originally part of Long Island and along with Brooklyn made up the outer boroughs of the area, neighboring Nassau and Suffolk counties. In 1898, Long Island City, along with the rest of Queens, was absorbed into the greater New York City due to its position within the island and close proximity to Manhattan creating a unified trade, economic, and political system that helped grow the country and turn New York into the greatest city in America. We begin the journey into Long Island City by crossing the Queensboro Bridge and being greeted by the beautiful high-rises, towering buildings of commercial and residential space that give the neighborhood a modern look among the dense city. The developmental growth of Long Island City began in the 1980s with the green-tinted City Group building at One Court Square. Prior to the 1990s, Long Island City was mostly warehouses and small family homes, a forgotten neighborhood from another era of New York. Within the last two decades, Long Island City has experienced a makeover from developers, which attracted thousands of new residents to what once was a small community. 
giving life to beautiful architecture, like the Hunter's Point Library, a $40 million piece of constructural artwork named New York's most uplifting building this century. It introduced a new era of contemporary design to the suburban borough of Queens, famous for its history with the World's Fair, and a waterfront that oversees the East River where ferries and cargo ships actively travel along the strait. The East River once held the title of the busiest water channel in the world, transporting cargo to areas like Manhattan, Brooklyn, and fellow neighborhoods like Astoria, Queens, which was also part of Long Island City. Astoria's Hellgate Bridge moves freight to America's inland territories, and visitors gather at the waterfront, engaging in photography for a wedding, which makes an ideal location for any event. With the beautiful backdrop of New York's skyline and the easy access to the ferries, it's no wonder why it's become the trendiest neighborhood in Queens. There's been so much development in the past couple of years in Long Island City that it blurs the line between Manhattan and Queens. At this point, you would think you were in the heart of the city. Gantry Plaza is one of the most popular attractions in Long Island City, simply because of the amazing views you get of Manhattan. This area was originally used to load and unload rail barges, the type of train ferry specifically designed to carry rail cars. The plaza serves as a reminder of the area's industrial history. Long Island City and its industrial past, a neighborhood that remained rural and undeveloped while its surrounding neighborhoods were experiencing a boom of new settlers. Hunter's Point was one of those neighborhoods, named after Robert Hunter, governor of New York during the 1700s. The neighborhood was farmland turned into an industrial hub for the shipping industry, a vital piece for the area's transatlantic shipping. And the park contains remains from the once dominant industry. Hunter's Point was absorbed into Long Island City and transformed with the addition of the Long Island Railroad. At the center of the waterfront, we find giant artifacts of the past, the gantries of Long Island. These giant gantries were built in the early 1900s and were able to lift up to four train cars. The box cars were picked from a float and dropped right onto a train track that extended to the edges of the waterfront. A modern marvel of invention, the gantries were crucial to New York's growing railroad system, which sustained box cars that weighed up to 100 tons. This era of Long Island City made it one of America's most prominent commercial zones, becoming an economic powerhouse of rail and waterway transportation, sending rail cars to places like New England, upstate New York, and further into Long Island, growing the city's network of trade into eastern and western territories. Visitors of the area walk by the gantries without knowing their fascinating history, a story which further fueled the growth of Queens County. Long Island City was an independent city between 1870 and 1898, containing close to 15,000 residents from the merging of several neighborhoods like Astoria and Sunnyside. And the city was a prosperous rising star when prominent American businessmen moved their industries to the area. Andrew Carnegie extended the Carnegie Steel Company into Long Island City, and the piano manufacturing visionary Frederick Steinway began production of the world-famous pianos and what later became Dittmars. There's also Henry Poor, the financier who co-founded a firm that would grow into America's S&P stock trading index, the Standard & Poor. But during the 1880s, corruption hit the government of Long Island City 
and it was one of the many reasons for joining the Greater New York. Bankruptcy and other costly projects provided the push to strengthen the economy. This is the modern Long Island City, a neighborhood that went from 20,000 residents in the 2010s to more than 60,000 within the 2020s. The residents and tourists of the area enjoy the shifting temperatures of winter into spring, while the Pepsi-Cola sign stands above the waterfront. The landmark is as iconic to the neighborhood as the gantries. Right where the park stood was a factory for the Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company that closed its doors in 2001. The sign was constructed in 1940 and upon its debut became New York's longest electric sign. At the time, industrial buildings would place giant signs of their respected companies to show off to Manhattan. Walking up to the looking glass, I zoom in to Midtown and the classic iconic buildings of the city, like the Chrysler and Empire State Buildings. And fully capturing the scenic environment, New York City looks as stunning as it does in postcards. The grandeur skyline of the Big Apple takes the crown for the best skyline in America. And the Gantry and Hunters Point waterfronts are underrated gems to view the skyline, which many New Yorkers call it the best place to take in the scenery. The State Park itself is a beautiful addition to the neighborhood, with reclining seats and lawn chairs spread throughout the plaza, making it a perfect place for recreation with the laid-back feel of being in Queens. The high-rises fetch top dollar for the views of Manhattan. Long Island City is considered the most expensive neighborhood in the borough with increasing demands that have raised the rental prices by almost 20% year over year, something unheard of in the start of the 2000s, but showcasing the changing landscape of the growing professionals moving to New York City. We can hear laughter and excitement coming from the state park where 50% of the neighborhood's population is below the age of 34 years old. This has made Long Island City an attractive market for giant tech firms, with companies like Amazon stirring up interest to establish an office in the area. The iconic Empire State Building looks over the neighborhood from a distance adding to the popular allure of Long Island City. All these changes are only the beginning to this transformative area, which has grown five times faster than the rest of the city. After the area saw a decline in manufacturing, a renaissance took place, bringing contemporary ideas that added art to the mix. With a changing neighborhood comes the poetry of its identity and developing a culture to distinguish itself from its surroundings. MoMA PS1 has seen much of that change and can be a metaphor for what the neighborhood has become. As seen from the museum entrance, art culture is at the heart of the high rises. Once we step inside of the museum, we're transported to a beautiful world of contemporary expression. Alana Heiss founded the PS1 Gallery in 1976 in the abandoned building of Long Island City's first public school. 
This museum is one of the largest and oldest nonprofit art institutions in America. Visitors to the museum focus on the stories written throughout the walls, bringing Alana's vision to life. Alana was a leader of the alternative space movement during the 1970s, revitalizing abandoned spaces throughout New York City and turning them into pieces of contemporary art. It's a precursor to the novel of Long Island City and its reimagined history of an abandoned industrial town to a thriving contemporary neighborhood. That's the reality. Art makes New York City. As sunset slowly brings the evening lights, we take a last look at the neighborhood and the connecting pieces of past versus present, where buildings like the beautiful Citigroup office to the shift in modern America. And the plaza to Long Island City's courthouse leave the markings of a bygone era. The courthouse remains from the time Long Island City stood on its own, open in 1876 and sitting across the city group building. It's a contrasting element of the neighborhood. The everyday residents contained in their busy lifestyles stroll through the plaza unaware of the small details of the neighborhood. A neighborhood that houses historical landmarks like Silver Cup Studios, the largest film studio in New York City, or the ancient remains of a glacial rock, a formation of history before New York even existed. Truly a one-of-a-kind tale in the ever-changing landscape of America's largest city. Queens is such a fascinating borough within New York City, and its neighborhoods add a unique story to the greater area. Long Island City went from industrial to commercial and residential zone, leaving a unique mark on the story of the Empire State, while showcasing how to properly develop a future without losing its identity. I'm Jose, and I thank you for joining me on this tour of the borough of Queens. Until next time, 